this is your girl Michelle. This is your girl Mariah, also known as Mariah Amazing. And you are tuned in to Melanie Voices. Hey. Hi, everyone. Hey, hey. You hear that extra voice because we have a special guest. It's my best friend, Mikhail Grayson. Hey. So glad to be on the show, joining you all for this topic today. So excited. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself? What do you do? So, my name is Mikhail. I'm a stripper. Oh. And I, okay. Okay. Oh, that was okay, unexpected. Maybe not. Diamond, all right. Diamond. Diamond. <laughs> Diamond. Um, no, I'm Cal. I am working on finding fulfillment. So you guys have to tune into my Instagram at MC underscore Grayson, G R A Y S O N. Got some really hot stuff coming out to you. So anyway, hey y'all. Hey Cal. Hey. I'm gonna have to look real look into that because I'm all about fulfillment too. So hell, me too. Ahead, do th- what does that even mean? Hell, different things for different <sighs> folks. It is different things. That's Mariah's thing, too. Okay. <laughs> folks, what you be saying? Different strokes for different folks. All right. So let's get into Melanie Media. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer the drum roll. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to talk about how I binge watched Dear White People over the weekend. And it's such a great show. And I really want you guys to watch it if you have a Netflix account. If you don't, borrow your friends, borrow your cousin, borrow your someone friend. who got it. I did not like Dear White People, the movie, but I found the series to be amazing. So I watched the first episode and I was like, hmm, all right. And now I watched the second episode, I was like, hmm, this is getting good. And third episode, I was like, yes, yes, let's keep this going. Oh, so, yeah, isn't it good? It's so good. It's so oh. good. And I recommend everyone to watch it for sure but what really struck me to talk about me watching that this weekend is similar to what we're going to talk about today on the podcast is sam who is the black woman activist on the show who's all about black empowerment she's a black woman she calls herself a zebra but i just learned a few minutes ago it's yeah, zebra so whatever <laughs> <laughs> Zebra, whatever. I ain't calling nobody no zebra. I ain't calling nobody no animal, neither. Like, you don't even deserve that. Anyway, yeah. she she was dating. She, she was dating a white male. And everyone found out because he posted on Instagram, hate when Bay leaves, when she's, like, putting her shirt on after she left him. Mm. Um, after got done doing it or whatever. And everyone turned their nose against her because she was, A, a black woman. To even going even harder, an activist for black people. And then they find out that she's been sleeping with slash dating a black, I mean, a white male. And people found that to be a huge issue. So. Oh yeah, Sam, love is love. Love is love, but no one thought that watching it. Everyone was upset with her. Everyone was really upset with her watching it everyone was upset with her like throughout the show like it's not like they were like like he was never accepted ever that's true so very interesting you know how black people we are really we're really some tough some tough people and we will not you know we won't accept judgmental because a lot of people judge us you know and you know that's what we're used to yeah we're just used to being judged all the time that it's like, all right, well, we're judgmental towards other people, but I don't think sometimes we realize it. It's more like we need to self-reflect sometimes. That's very true. So let's go ahead and get into the hot topic so we can talk more in detail. Yes. So the hot button topic relates to kind of what Michelle and Mikhail. Oh my God, I cannot say that together. I'm about to jinx myself. <laughs> but um, Mikhail and Michelle were speaking about um, dating, well, see, I'm dating outside her race and that ties into our hot topic of the day which is interracial relationships and we this well michelle decided to talk about it and we thought it was a good topic because of it's pretty much the 21st century a lot of people are dating outside the race so it's a long overdue topic that we haven't discussed quite yet um so i'm gonna jump into the very first question that michelle drafted which was why do black women have a problem with black men dating white women and vice versa why do you think that is, Michelle? Why do you think that? I guess we'll start with black women. Why do you think that 
uh, we have a problem with black men dating white women. Okay, I have a three. I have a theory, but I have a theory to everything. That's just who I am. <laughs> first, my first theory is that the limit, the limit, limitations of black men that are available. Well, good black men that are available. Majority of our black men are either incarcerated, dead, or dating white women. So, therefore, we find that our resources are limited and we're in a drought. So, anytime that we see a good black man dating a white woman, we are upset, we are frustrated, and we are angry. Two, why are we angry though? Because we would date them? I'm saying, like, why would people be upset? Is my question. Like, when you see a a fine looking black man go by and he's with a white woman, like, why are you upset? Because you would date him? Because you didn't personally have a chance with him? It's because I said my theory is because then when we find that black men are, you know, we don't find that there's too many of them, the good ones. So the ones that are taken shouldn't be taken by white women because they have plenty of white men available. They have mm-hmm. loads okay. of them available, but we don't have loads of our men available and it's not our fault. So therefore we are upset that white women are dating our black men because A, they're ours, B, they're ours, C, they're ours, so, you know, you can't have them in the story. So I think that's one, that's one theory, okay? My okay, okay. Theory is black women don't, okay, my second theory is there's not many black men in the household, so there's not many daddies. So my second theory is daddy problems, daddy issues. So therefore, it's almost the void we're trying to fill. So when we see our black men dating outside of our race, we feel like that void needs to that void shouldn't be that void needs to be filled by our black men and not seeing it from not seeing our black men being with any other race besides us. So we almost feel like our heart is ripped out of our chest when we see black men dating outside of our of our race because it's a it's a trauma thing. I we can didn't see have that. our daddies there and we want our black men to be in our lives and father our children because we never had that. So when we see other people, you know, with taking that void away, I mean <clears throat> using them, or I mean not using them, or taking them from us, that's what we feel taking. I'm just I'm using, I feel like I'm using that vocabulary, but when we see that, we get very, we're sad, we're emotional in an aspect like that. My third theory is black women don't really have a reason to be mad, and some black women don't know why they're mad. So... Why they just don't ones. know how to say it, they're or they're so Yeah, or they just don't know what a, they don't know why. Though. There's no if you True. ask a black woman why she's mad that she that someone's dating a, a man outside of her race, she has no idea. She has no answer. She just said just because because. So those are the ones who just don't know. They just the just becausers. So I have so those are my three theories: the just because, the fulfillment. <laughs> the fulfillment. Haha, <laughs> you like that, Mikhail? The fulfillment. Yeah, there you and go. And then girl. the third one is the third one is the the limited. I mean, the limit, the resource. It's almost like a drought. Hmm. That's why they're mad. The well, drought. I personally, when I see a black man dating outside his race, I don't care. I will say this though: I do care when it starts to affect black women. So when you date outside your race, that's great. You can date them because you love them. Whatever. Your preference. Cool. That's what's up. I'm happy for you. I don't give a fuck. What I do care about is when you're dating outside your race, but you have to compare to a black woman. I'm dating this white woman because black women are not submissive. I'm dating this Hispanic woman because our children are going to look better because their hair texture is going to be better. Oh, I'm dating outside my race because black women are this way or black women look this way or, you know, whatever way they want to compare. So if you're going to date outside your race, make sure you're dating outside your race because you truly love that person, not because you want to tear down the other race, which is your own race, right? Because at the right. end of the day, it shouldn't be like that. You, you're like, well, I'm, you're, you're, you're mad because I'm, I'm dating my preference. I don't care. That's your preference. That's amazing that you find that person attractive. 
What I don't like is you have to tear down a whole another race because of it. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. And it's your own race. Like, you're basically tearing down yourself. I'm dating black women. I'm not dating black women because they're not as fine as Hispanic women. I'm not dating a black woman because, you know, she... She just, she's just not as cute. We ain't gonna have no cute kids if I date her. Mm-hmm. Like, it's ignorant. really ignorant because, first of all, you're black yourself. So what are you saying? Right. So I just don't like the fact that most times, I'm not gonna say every time, I'm gonna say most times when I come across men that decide to date outside their race mm-hmm. who are black men who decide to date outside their race, it's always some self-hatred type things that they have to compare the woman that they're with now to a black woman. Right. In a negative aspect. It's that's almost like they have like. to justify. And it's like, yeah. that's not a justification, though. Like, Just say, I'm dating because I love her. Right. Who's going to argue with that? You know what I mean? You don't have to date her because of what another woman doesn't do or you feel like another woman doesn't look like or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I personally am upset by it. Sure. I don't care if I see it, but if you have to go out your way to say that, then that's a problem for me. That's true. Can I tell you something? Okay, so Malcolm X, Malcolm X had a theory on why black men were dating white women or marrying white women because he found that black men seen them marrying into the white family as being successful. Like back in the day, so if you if you marry into a white household and you have, you making white money, then that was your that was their definition of being successful. Like they made it. I thought that was deep. I can understand. Well, I can't understand it, but I can see that just because even with black names, like for example, people are like, no, 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 that name's too black. Like, no, if you see that on a resume, they're not gonna hire you. And it's like mm-hmm. the same concept idea. Like, okay, they're not fully black, so maybe they have a chance, or maybe they're not. Um, or I don't know. I'm still not getting hired. My name is Mariah Stewart, so I'm really upset by that, but okay. What you want to name me? I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> but it's just like, maybe, um, I don't know. Like I was saying, like, maybe they'll have a chance at uh, uh, being successful because they're not black, you know? And so it's like, oh, because your mom is white or because maybe your dad is white. It's like, oh, you, you have a, another chance at opportunities that lie ahead of you, kind of like with names. They're like, don't nobody want a ghetto-ass name because they're like, oh, if you see that on the resume, you're definitely not getting an interview. And it's maybe the same concept, same theory. Like, maybe Malcolm X was on to something. Yeah, that's what I think. Even when I'm reading back on books on how... There's so many books I've read about racism, but also how white women have helped black men in back in slavery, back in slavery, I hate, I hate saying slavery days, but back in the day, white women were one of the main reasons why black men learned how to read, learned how to, you know, was able to come into the household. So basically when back in the day or whatever, black men were put, taken out of the field and putting put in the household in some instances where the white woman would cling on to the little black boy and she would teach him things like teach him how to read who is that oh, or have babies with him exactly exactly so there's a lot of instances where we see white women almost helping the black men and some of these black men are actually our historical leaders of today and one of their first people who gave them a book was a white woman so no, that is true it's, Even for like light skinned women in the house, like you know, some people that are lighter skinned, they were they could go ladies. in the, yeah, they yeah, yeah, what she said. They could go in the house, right. you know, because they were seen as more attractive. Their skin was lighter. So it was more towards that, you know, white as being the dominant race, you know. So if you look like more white, then yeah, they, they treated you better. Exactly. So maybe that theory is still going on. Even That's today. what I'm saying. Maybe they're still I think we're still we're still matching or we're still seeing success as in white. Yep. So that's why we see a lot of our black men going to the white household because they feel like maybe they they feel like they've made it, you know, in that aspect. So that's my theory, but you know, that's just my theory. You know, it, it, you know, don't no one take you take what I say literal or you can take it as a joke. Interesting. Whatever the case may be. What do you think, Cal? So. 
Yeah, Mikhail, since you aren't you in an interracial relationship, can oh, you talk to us yes. about that? <laughs> yes, honey, I am. Why do you date outside your race? Sean. He is white, um, definitely as white as he can get. And, <laughs> Don't do him like that. And I love him, though. And so me looking at this topic or going into this, like, I, I can't relate. Honestly, I can't relate. Um, I did not choose him or, you know, we... I, we didn't choose each other just because, like, oh, or I didn't choose him because I was like, oh, he's white, um, my kids are going to be successful, blah, 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 because I don't even want kids. <laughs> Not going to lie, I hate them. Well, I wouldn't say hate, but she does. I don't like them at all. So Aww. it wasn't like because I, I wanted nice mixed babies, as they say now these days, mm-hmm. like, who, get it together, y'all. But it was because I love him. And so when I'm listening to these different things, it's like, no, we found each other on college campus, like, at, at school, and mm-hmm. it's because I love him. It had nothing to do with our our race. As we connected, um, we had good conversation. You know, we made a point to talk to each other daily, and so mm-hmm. it it's like these things, it's like I can't even relate. Like, I don't know. I don't know I what it a, is. I have a question for you. Yeah. In your relationship, have you found it to be – has there come times where you have ever had to – Talk to what's his name? What's your dude's name? Sean. You had to talk to Sean and culturally appropriate him on certain things that he can and cannot do. Has there ever been an instance where you had to do that? No, only because he has not disrespected me in that way. Like he would never say the N word. He ain't mm-hmm. he's not going around there. That's that's disrespectful, period, to right. whoever. So he doesn't do that. He's mm-hmm. if anything, he's more re- I wouldn't say relatable, but he tries to, he tries to understand. And so just like, you know, going back to dear white people, he's like, oh my gosh, Mikhail, like, did you see this um, young black man get shot? And he's like, I, mm-hmm. he's like, I watched that and I was literally like running on the tra- or running on the treadmill crying. Cause he's like, I, I don't understand. He's like, that could have been your brother. Like that could have been mm-hmm. you. And I would be so broken. And I, he was just like, I just don't understand, you know, how that's still going on today. And he's like, how it breaks my heart. Cause like, how can I help? He's like, how, what do I do to help? If anything, he, he's trying to understand. Mm-hmm. And so, so to answer your question, um, no, it's not real. No. Cause it's, it's out okay. of respect, you know? Yeah. Have you ever had a get out moment meeting his family? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. No, hell no. Because okay. listen. she stands away. She doesn't like tea. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Like, have they hit you with the like, you know, I love your hair, or like, ever said anything to the point where your blackness was? I feel like exclamated, exclamated. I don't know what to say. Yeah. The topic. I don't know why. Um, People love her hair more than they like Mikhail. But uh, my hair is always a topic, and so if anything, it was more like I, they did say this. I do remember, and they were like, "I wish my hair." Had as much volume as your hair, and I'm like, well, yeah, your hair is, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, like, what yeah. can I say? I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, right, right, <laughs> exactly. But no, they've always made me feel welcomed. Um, they don't exclude me from anything. If anything, it's like Sean will be like, hey, so my family's in town. Like, we have dinner. You're coming, right? And I'm like, all right, cool. And then say something comes up, and I'm like, I can't come. And they're like, okay, well, why can't she come? Okay, well, can we do another day? Okay, well, um, if she can't come today, can she come tomorrow? Like, they always mm-hmm. make me feel included mm-hmm. with any kind of trips, in- anything that's going on. Mm-hmm. And even his grandmother, who's 90, and she's seen it all. Obviously, she's been through. What? Girl, that would have been crazy for me. You met his grandma yeah, 90? And- yeah, she is 90. We celebrate her birthday. But you should, I have to show y'all on Facebook we are in a picture. I'm obviously the only black person in this family picture. Mm-hmm. And she's like holding on to my arm. Like there I we're included. Like we don't see race that way. And Sean was like, if my parents were like that, I I would disown my family. He's like, mm-hmm. I'm not about that. Like people are people and everybody has feelings. And so right. to be disrespectful towards somebody just because of the color of their skin, he's like, That's 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 not I would never associate my myself with that type of person. So mm-hmm. his family's not like that at all. That's why I'm okay. like I, I don't know what goes on with some people to be honest. I wonder I wonder if you just got it kind of lucky cuz I feel like there's some instances where that is and people see it but they ignore it and put it in that yeah. aspect where they are being as a put at a center of attention when they're 
outside of the race that they're dating. It, let that be any race, like not even just black and white. It could be any. It could be any race. Next, mm-hmm. Latino, Irish. I don't. I don't care what you are. There is something where people do kind of try to separate you based off your religion, based off your culture, your heritage, things like that. So, and maybe that could be it. Because I'm like, it's just definitely not the case. And I can honestly say, if it was like that, I, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't be with them. Like I just, okay. I got so much stuff on my plate. Like to be thinking about what your mom is saying about me because of my color, what your grandma is saying or anybody mm-hmm. is saying about, like, I don't have time for that. And obviously like your family has more issues to deal with. And when y'all come back to 2017, which we still have issues, don't get me wrong, but right. when y'all come back, then you know, we can talk, but it has never, when I say never, never been that way ever. Mm-hmm. So same way know. with your family, same with lucky. your family, your family didn't give you no backlash with that. Dating a white no, boy? No, my family does not. My family sees it the same way. Like people are people, and um, my sister is dating a white guy. Um, my other sister has dated a Mexican, a black, a a white, an Asian. Mm-hmm. I don't know everything, mm-hmm. and so we just see each other as people. And no, like don't get me wrong. Like if you came in white, black, Mexican, whatever, and you were rude as fuck, or mm-hmm. you treated like one of us like shit then yeah, we would have a problem. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, like that person seems like they treat you well. Like they look out for you. Um, They always want to be around you. Sean Mm -hmm. is, me and Sean are like touchy feely people. Like we hold each other. We, we hold hands in bed. I'm not going to lie every night. PDA like overboard. (laughs) And we've been dating for three years and I don't even care. We love each other. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's what my family sees is that it's love. Not like, "Mm, well, look at how he looks. They see love. They don't see color. What did I say? I said they see love, they don't see color. Exactly. It, it, it seriously, it's true. Okay. Sorry, I had to put you in the hot seat. Girl, I like being in the hot seat. I'm like, Ooh. Fire up. you Fire came up. strong though. You was ready. You was ready. She was like, gotcha. Got you. <laughs> gotcha. Little bit, you know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, so Shell, would you um, well, this is another one of your questions you drafted. Would you date outside your race, and why? And why not? I'm right. You, why can't you answer the question? I we I both I answered my question. It's your turn. <laughs> I asked my question. We all asked Michelle is married, so she like, why'd you talk oh. to me? Like, no, 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 because I, I, she answered her question first. I'll answer. Fine, I will answer. I, I thought we were all answering questions, <laughs> but um, yes, I had dated all time my race, so that's my answer. I have. I mean, would, would you? Like, I thought you, you said like, would I? Like, I thought you said would I? Hmm. I thought you said, would I date outside my race? Yeah, would you? Have you? I have. Mm -hmm. Would I currently? I, personally, I'm just attracted to black men, so Mm -hmm. that's just me. But um, have I dated outside my race before? Yes. My, one of my exes was um, Indian, from India. So, yes, Mm -hmm. I have dated outside my race. Um, I never dated outside of my race. No white dude ever came for me, or anyone outside of being black has ever came <laughs> to me or you gotta come to Colorado girl well you she, do she, live she here I was like you did here I was like well you I was not born here I was not born here you know where I was born you know where I was born no no, no I said you went to Mount Bella with me so yeah oh yeah I did we went to the same high school so but no I think it's because I don't know maybe I'm just walking around with a black glow or something a black girl, my, boo. My, my, my Michelle. Next question. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, why ain't no like, you know, why ain't no one outside my my race ever tried to talk to me? Is something going on with me? Why? Why wouldn't they try In to talk? And so the guy, the guy that I did date, he dated black women previously, so it was like his preference. But was his aren't his friends black or something? Yeah. So like he hung around black people. That's what I'm saying. It makes it he easier. He dated black women, so I mean. I don't know. Honestly, okay. I don't think that anyone outside of being black would be my type. My preference are black men. Now, maybe I, I'm all for giving chances. I'm all for dates. I'm all for dinner dates. Free food, I'm there. Good <laughs> conversation, I'm there. Yes. That's funny. I'm, you can never say no. Ladies, never say no to no date. Free food. Free conversation. As long as it's a good conversation, hey, 
and meet there. Meet there if you want to. Go ahead and meet there. You know, you never know, you know, what's going to happen. But I'm saying if someone had asked me outside of my race to take me on a date, I would definitely not say no. And we'll go from there. As long as he doesn't smell like anything. As long as he has good hygiene, looks good, has good conversation, we're good. Sounds about right. <laughs> Do you guys think that there's like a mixed craze though? Like a mixed ch- children craze? Do you think that with our society, they kind of um, glorify mixed children? They do. There's a mixed babies Instagram everywhere. Yeah. I think it goes oh, back to what Michelle was talking about earlier. Right. Though. What happened? And there? Malcolm X and like, you know, yeah. people, maybe, maybe, like your theory, maybe people are dating or ha- want these mixed babies because of success. It but associates with the dominant race. If you have, if you look similar to the dominant race, then you're considered more beautiful. And I think we as people are still saying that beauty is associated with looking like our dominant race. If that's having long hair, if that's having curly hair, if that's having blue eyes, gray eyes, lighter skin, smaller nose. Smaller What? Smaller nose. You talking about toes? I'm like, girl, my toes too. What you talking about? It's like smaller, you know, smaller noses. Whatever the case may be, I think it's we're still saying that beauty looks like our dominant race, and that's why mixed babies have been a huge craving. Like, oh, this baby is so beautiful. Look at its curly hair and its lighter skin and its pretty eyes and its smaller nose and whatever, whatever that looks like. It doesn't look anything like us and the only thing that we contribute to it is oh i want to have more volume in my hair right or the baby has more volume or the you know they have stronger muscular stronger muscles you know our black men are like freaking stallions and them foods make you know can make some stallion babies they, so will, they like oh don't i make want no little athlete. Bleep. don't make no little, little, little thing <laughs> anyway but i do think there is a craving with mixed babies and i think that is my theory on why there is and any black man who's going around trying to procreate with the out someone outside of their race and if, if it's specifically for that reason here's a tip for you you cannot mix everything honey and don't make it seem like that baby still gonna come out looking like your great grandma that looked like Gucci man. <laughs> you can't forget that your jeans is still going to be mixed in there. So your stop playing are, yourself. Your jeans play a role in everything. So just because you are mixing um, races doesn't mean that your your jeans are not going to play a role or it's going to be a factor. And I think that's super funny how we want to be the dominant race or the dominant race wants to be us too. <laughs> it's like we like still don't get it. Lips, they want a bigger backside. They want more volume in their hair than what their curl t- their texture of curls to be, you know, s- nice and springy. And But damn, I don't even have they that. They want tanner you know. skin. They want all these things. They want bigger lips. All this stuff that we have. And I think it's just funny how we're trying to be like them and in reality they're trying to be like us. But that's it's a story a lot of, the It is because a lot of, so it is because a lot of uh, marketing, social media, things that we see, everything that we see from TV to Barbie dolls, to success everyone who looks like money looks like success or on tv any of those categories beauty they all are white and if we don't surround ourselves or look and see people who look like us that are successful that are beautiful that you know that resemble anything like us then we're not going to associate success looking like us yeah if that makes no, sense. True. I think that's getting better though with now with this now with society is starting to get a little better. Like now we can see beautiful actresses that are making a way for themselves, like Taraji B. Henson or mm-hmm. Gina Hall or Angela Bassett or Viola Davis. We're starting to see darker skinned women and just black women in general just being just succeeding. Like Taraji B. Right. Henson has an amazing year in acting like Oh my God, Viola Davis like is killing it. Like, who is what's her name? Lupita, Lupita, Lupita. 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 I mean, I don't know how I feel about Lupita because she got famous based off. I'm not a fan of slavery movies, so that's a whole other topic. It's just not my thing. But I know she got famous off of being 
what she was raped on. 50, ah! What? 30. Wait, what? She was raped on um thousands years of a slave or something. Oh, I never. Twelve years of a slave. Whatever. I, 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 I don't don't want to see it either. So. That's how she got famous. That's what I'm saying. We put it. It took that. It took that. It took that. It took a white man to rape this woman for her to be seen now as a huge icon. I'm sick. I'm sick to my stomach. Yes, yeah, she's a beautiful woman. I'm happy that she's made it, but it took her to get to that level. Like, it took Halle Berry to have sex with a white man on Munster's Ball for her to win a Grammy nomination. Like, it yeah. takes things like that. I haven't seen that either. Obviously, takes, I, I need to watch movies. <laughs> it no. takes a white man... It takes a white man to dehumanize a black woman for her to be seen as successful in today's society. And I'm sick and sick to my stomach about it. So I don't, I'm happy that she is the way she is. But the fact that it took that to get to her where she is today is what makes me uncomfortable. So That's crazy. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. Craziness. Anyway, there was my, you know, that's my Sam moment. Well, the other ones, like Taraji. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa Davis. Right. But, um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, right. I haven't seen I Told You the Slave, and I kind of don't want to, so. Um, don't. I ain't watching it. But thanks for letting us know about that. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So, Snapchat combos? Yes, girl. So, let me go ahead and open up my Snapchat. But I got some good responses um, from my Snapchat conversations. I asked everyone the same questions that me Michelle and Mikhail discuss that it's gonna mix me up and that we discussed this week. Um, but yeah, so the questions I asked were why am I repeating myself? <laughs> questions I asked were the questions I asked, and the questions I asked were the questions I asked. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm opening it on my thing, so obviously I'm trying to buy time. But yeah, so we got some questions. Um, this girl named Alicia, her name on Snapchat. I will go ahead and list that below. But anyways, she said that she hasn't did it outside her race. She's a mixed woman as well. So she's black and she's white. Her mother is white. Her dad is black. Um, She said, no, she hasn't, but she would. She's not sure why, but she would date outside her race. Um, And then a friend of mine, Lauren, answered the question. So I'm just trying to give answers to each question from different people. So um, Lauren decided to state her opinion on the mixed race um, children things she kind of basically said what I was thinking that um, basically that you kind of need to take care of your kids mental oh, and, and her snapchat comments was saying that she answered the mixed race children thing so basically she said that there's a lot of trouble identifying with respective backgrounds to some people they're not black enough to others they're not white enough and they have trouble embracing both sides and figuring out how they identify especially when there's such a huge divide in the country and I agree with Lauren because there is this huge, huge thing about mental race babies where people aren't thinking about their mental um, wellness and their mm-hmm. just whole, their whole spiritual being because when you bring these children into the world, you're not realizing that um, they're going to have trouble embracing both cultures. So are you, you're trying to have like this beautiful baby that's great, but are you going to be there for them mentally and spiritually when they're coming home crying because they're getting mm-hmm. teased or they're coming home not understanding, hey, mom, I don't know if I'm black or if I'm white. You know what I mean? Like, they're coming home and they're just not Conflicted under- and They're confused. conflicted and confused. And you're, right, why are you worried exactly. with a pretty baby? Now, you got a pretty baby who got an effed up mental. So, basically, that's what she was saying. And I totally agree with her. Right, that's true. Mm-hmm. And you don't know how to do the baby's hair. <laughs> Per usual, it's like, no, but, uh, yes, I agree with Lauren in that aspect. That's crazy, but. Yeah, me too. I agree. I agree. So sure. moving right along. Me too. So Michelle together. decided to have her a good old time last week seeing Omari Hardik. I did. I did, and he's so fine. <laughs> anyway, oh and he Capricorn, so he's speaking ooh, that deep. Ooh, I don't he's even know po- what I mean. He's poetic, I've never, I've you know, he's big. I'm a Capricorn. No, as a man, like a, I don't want to date oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, still don't. Oh, I, I get. I tell every woman, you stay away from Capricorn men. They are the worst. They're the worst. Oh, never mind. He's a Capricorn man. Tyrese, the singer, is a Capricorn man. Denzel Washington. I definitely don't like Tyrese. <laughs> Is he that bad? I just don't like how. You've been talking I, stuff lately about black women, so hey, hey. 
anyway. Anyway, um, yeah, I got to see Omari Hardwick, which was nice. It was great to see how well-spoken he is and how he's so down to earth. So I really enjoyed that. I wanted to go up there and ask him about his controversy between interracial relationships, though. Like, it took every piece of me to not go up there and be like, so I know you had a lot of backlash with once you posted your wife on your Instagram. How did you take that? I wanted to say that so bad, but I didn't. Such a coward. Ain't I? <laughs> anyway. No, you just was like, I'm not going to ruin the moment. That's probably what you was I wasn't, about. but I was just like, that's a real topic. That's something I really want to know how you dealt with that. Because he's been writing with him since day one. So he probably would he probably would hit me with something good. And I would have been a I good soundbite, that. too. It would have been. It would have been. Yeah. Um, but there was that. <laughs> and also, Black Business of the Week is my spot. Talk a lot. Yeah, That's my spot. It's in Harlem. And I always... That's my go-to spot. I haven't been there in a while, but I happened to go there and remembered it was so good. And they have mimosas, and they keep that mimosa filled to the top all the time. So when you and Mikhail come out here for Curl Fest, we hey! are going to go. I got my curls ready. Me yes, too. I'm, I'm so ready. excited. They stiff right now, though, but they good. I'm going to buy my ticket tomorrow because I get paid tomorrow, so. <laughs> Let me know when y'all ready. I'll get y'all some, you know, get y'all some bags, sleeping bags. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> yes, I will let you know when we come. I mean, I will let you know when I get my thing. We coming. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun by getting some melanin voices popping. I want to do us a live segment. Do whatever. Oh, that would be so dope. That would be good. I want to get some crop tops made. Some cards, yes, all that. I'm, I'm down. So people will be like, where you get your shirt from? We'll be like, you got to listen to melanin voices. And then they'll be like, yeah, listen in. And we, you know, we can go from there. Exactly. Promote, promote, promote. <laughs> Promote, promote, support, support. Anyway, let's go ahead and end it off. Do you have any last minute comments, Mikhail, Mariah? No. Just stay true to yourself. Stay true to yourself and love is love. Love so is love. Just love. And we love y'all. Okay. What is that Shihan? Y'all heard Shihan before? No. Oh my god. Oh, Shihan. Yes. I'm sorry. From okay, Death Jam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to love like me thinking of you, being, thinking, thinking of you, me, thinking, thinking of you, of. Love, yeah. <laughs> how you look so good next to me. Your last name looks so good. Anyway. I'm about to go anyway. watch that video again. It's on my Facebook. <laughs> Just love is love, and look up Shehan because he makes you love everything about love. I have not he, seen that. I need to go. Obviously, I haven't seen nothing. Obviously, you don't be looking at my Facebook <laughs> post. I posted him. Any. <laughs> <Yeah, all right. laughs> Okay, okay. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, Mikhail, for being on this show. We oh, really love when you on. have guests. You, you know, I had to put you in the hot seat, but I appreciate it because it's always good to hear from an outside voice because that's what Melanie Voices is about. Everyone's what? voice because it's not all about just Mariah and I's voice. We come on here. What we about talk about our want to be featured? Like, how can I get involved? Join. Hit us up on Facebook, DM us. We post every Sunday. Say something. Oh, see, close okay, mouths don't okay. get close mouths don't get fed. But you know what? We want to we want we want to get everyone's voices out there. So if you do want to be on the show, please go on to Melanin Voices, Melanin Voices One at gmail.com. You can always reach us, melaninvoices.com. Anything called Melanin Voices, we are there. Melanin Voices, we have put our stamp our fingerprints over that so if you just look up melanin voices Mariah and i will pop up you can subscribe to our youtube give your comments remember that whatever Mariah and i say on this podcast or the great or the guests that we bring on this podcast it is strictly our opinions we're not saying any views that are against anything this is just strictly what we believe and what we think so if you do have a comment please share 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 and support 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 Ladies, that's it. You guys good? Yeah, yeah. we're good. Woo. All right, perfect. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you Peace. so much. Bye, everyone. Peace.